Welcome back to 12th Year Health. I'm Dr. Derek DeSilva. Kids don't want to hear it, but it's almost time to head back to school. While that's welcome news for parents, the news they don't want to hear is that their child has caught something from one of their classmates. Here with some advice on how to make that transition back to school a healthy one is Dr. Julie Chen, an integrative medicine specialist who specializes in holistic medicine to help improve overall health, prevent and treat disease, and maximize longevity. Dr. Chen, welcome to the program. Thank you for Great having me. Great to have you here. Colds and flus seem to be the most obvious thing as kids head back to school, but what else do parents really need to be worried about besides that? Well, a lot of their daily activities can affect their immune system. Uh, a lot of their safety issues, their sleep cycles, their um, exercise levels, all of those affect their general overall health as well as their immune system. So if you're worried about parents or worried about the kids getting sick, you want to make sure that they get back into a regular sleep cycle, aside from the ones where it's more irregular mm -hmm. during the summertime. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that they're getting a mild to moderate level of intensity of exercise to make sure that they're boosting their immune mm -hmm. system. Okay. And of course, safety when they're right. out with their right. friends, wearing their seatbelts. But let me, let me just well. show you that right now, just to ask you this. What can kids do and what can parents do right now mm -hmm. to, 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 you know, to, to keep their immune system healthy? Sleep is obviously one of the most important right. things, right? Right. Sleep is important. What else? So definitely, again, that exercise, because we've seen in clinical studies that excessive exercise can suppress the immune system, but mild to moderate exercise helps the, to boost the immune system. And also things like eating a plant-based diet, because you're creating that fundamental building blocks of the minerals and vitamins and phytonutrients to have a healthy immune system. And stress, of course, is something that is going to be right, suppressing right, the immune right. system. And so, of course, you can't seem to get away from that during the school year, but to actually incorporate some relaxation times and downtimes for the kids so right. that they can, uh, their immune system and, and, I, and there's one thing that you mentioned that I think is very important is the whole idea of the whole exercise issue. You right. know, that leads to a healthy sleep cycle. Mm -hmm. That leads to better, I, th I think, better eating habits, a little right. bit more hydration and things like that. But once they're back in school, mm -hmm. uh, something comes up and there's always things around the kids, a lot of kids are sick. What can they do at that time once they're back in school to stay healthy? So it's really important for them to make sure that they're washing their hands because a lot of times they're going around to communal areas touching germs mm -hmm. and a lot of times we then touch our face and our nose and mucosa and that's where a lot of the germs come from so make sure they're washing their hands but if they're able to let's say they're working right. out in the gym wipe down the communal areas right. to sanitize right, right, right. and also really to kind of focus on the fact that uh, a lot of the foods that we eat mm -hmm. also suppress our immune system so a lot of sugary foods processed foods have been seen to suppress the immune functioning so again, Again, I agree with you, when you exercise, you te tend to eat better, and when you're eating better, you're eating less of right. those sugary foods. So, so the whole thing about washing your hands, mm -hmm. doing the things you're supposed to do, you know, I think kids need to be said, told that when you go to the bathroom, you really need to wash your hands. Yeah. And I think that that whole behavior mm -hmm. really needs to be reinforced with them. And the anti-cold routines, you know, what, what are some of those things, again, besides washing your hands? So definitely, you know, when if you already yourself have a cold, make sure you're not coughing into your hands, you're coughing into your elbows so that you're not spreading it everywhere. Make sure that you're getting the rest, decreasing the, the um, stress in your life getting the moderate intensity exercise, avoiding the things that you know are going to suppress your immune system, the foods, the activities, et cetera, mm -hmm. those are important. You know, the, the one thing mm -hmm. that I really tell parents is, and, and there's a lot of data that has now come out on this about the antibacterial hand washers and things like that. Right. My opinion, and you can give me yours, sure. is soap and water. Plain old soap and water is just as good. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. That? I think a lot of times it's just, and also making sure that you're washing your hand long enough. This whole kind of rub a little bit and then rinse a little mm -hmm. bit, that, that's not going to get as much effect as you want to. So you, the soap and water and you're really rinsing for several minutes to get all the bacteria off and then using paper towels to wipe off the bacteria, right. that's important. And also, again, opening the bathroom door using the paper towel to open Do it all the time. Important. Do right. it all the time. So if you catch a cold or flu, the kids get sick, uh, what else can they do? I know one of the things that I always tell them is that there are certain cold fighting supplements. What do you like as far as that goes? So I love using black elderberry, andrographis, astragalus. There's some anti-inflammatory aspects to some of these herbs and they have uh, antiviral uh, activity as well, which is helpful. Um, but some of the things like a lot of my patients don't know is vitamin C at higher levels, two to three grams, mm -hmm. have some antihistamine right. effects right. without all that drowsiness. So right. I really like to recommend that. And then that. sleep obviously is important. Yes. 
important for the immune system, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And you want to make sure that you're getting going to bed around the same time, waking up around the same time. Our bodies like rhythm, chronobiology, mm -hmm. um, and so that's important. And so even if you're getting six hours, but they're, they're at random times, it's not as good as if you got it at regular times. And then re obviously relaxation and making sure that 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 whole piece of diminishing stress and helping support the health of the immune system. Right, they actually did a study on students where they looked at when they're going through finals time, their immune system is suppressed. So stress is a huge impact on our, our immune functioning. So decreasing that is important. Thank you so much for being here. Thank it's you so much. It's a pleasure to finally meet you after all the <laughs> interviews we've done on radio. So it's Thank great to see you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Still to come, some foods with amazing powers you should consider adding to your diet. But first, here's a look at this week's Community Health Calendar.